What's good, everybody? It's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Diff, your favorite nappy headed fat boy producer with no hairline. Well, no shape, but I need to get shades in my widow's peak coming back. I need to get that uh, fixed real soon. But you know, I can't afford another because my bank account's on zero. So, you know, it is what it is. But today, I'm going to teach you guys how to use a compressor. Yes, this fat guy can teach you guys how to use a compressor. Just like I taught you in the EQ video, this would probably be the same thing. I'll be showing you a compressor that pretty much everybody has and pretty much everybody owns. Well, not everybody owns, but pretty much. Much what I'll be teaching you, you can do on any DAW, Cubase, Logic, uh, Reason, Studio One, Pro Tools, I mean, Reaper, uh, Audacity, I mean, whatever. You'll be able to understand how to use a EQ uh, compressor plugin in this video and it should help you, you know, understand it a little bit better and just understand the basics of it so you can compress your vocals properly. Yeah, so let's see what we can do. So before we get that, if you can, don't follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and SoundCloud at Mr. Different TV. And also don't subscribe to the channel. Leave a dislike because a lot of your haters are going to do that anyway. And hopefully the like people, there will be a few likes out there for people who actually genuinely like my videos. But hey, I'm a fat guy trying to teach other people how to do so. So who knows who will like this video. So let's jump right side of FL Studio and begin this video. So here we are inside of FL Studio once again. I will be using the same track that I used last time, the Fat Boy Anthem. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm gonna call it, I don't know. But I'm using this track to kind of show you how to use a compressor. It's gonna be the same one I used for the EQ video, so you'll see the same EQ settings. And I would suggest watching that video if you understand how to EQ your vocals because it's a really helpful video. And I will have more videos using this track and all that. So I, when I first did the video, I did record it with a compressor, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna disable this compressor. I'm gonna get rid of this compressor because not a lot of people own this compressor. And we're gonna use this compressor right here. This is the one from Fat Filter called Pro C2. It is a pretty standard digital compressor. It has all the uh, controls that you will actually need uh, from any compressor. So you can use a stock compressor, you can use a third party compressor, your favorite, any control, anything that has threshold, ratio, attack, and release, and makeup gain, you'll be good. And I'm gonna tell you what all these parameters do and show you how you can use this on your vocals. So let's just kind of give you a little. Let me just kind of play the song again so you kind of see what it sounds like, and then we will go into using this compressor. I'm a fat motherfucker, watch my belly shake I fall out of bed and make the world quake Damn, I'm hungry as hell No food up in the fridge, you got some stamps for sale? I look up in my bank account, that shit say zero I guess I'm gonna be stuck a hometown hero Well so it sounds pretty good. I mean, you know, I, I, bars, man, fat bars, you know, big chocolate king size bars. But anyway, let's get back to it. So here it is, Fat Filter Pro C2. Now, it has all the static controls that you'll ever need in any compressor. That's going to be your threshold, your ratio, your attack, your release, and then your makeup gain or gain, whatever you want to call it. It don't really matter. And then this has a dry wet knob and it has a few other things specific to Fat Filter, but we're only going to you know, focus on these top five controls right here because that's in every compressor. Now, what a compressor is, I'm just gonna give you a little brief history. If you don't wanna know, you can skip ahead. You don't have to understand, but I'm gonna give you a brief history for people who don't know. A compressor is basically an automatic gain adjustment. So basically what they used to do in the past, like, you know, since we didn't have technology we had today, they would have to ride the levels manually. A vocalist go higher or gets louder, they pull it down. When they get quiet, they pull it up. And they pretty much had did that on the fly in real time. That's what it is. But if somebody came up with a smart idea to make a compressor, or a idea to actually do this automatically and that's when compressors came into uh, light and you know they vary and they do different things and they act different but they all do the same thing they're just to control the dynamics of your vocals or your sound source so not to make it louder or more like that you can't use it as an effect but the major the main majority of what they're used for is to control the dynamics of your you know material so let's get right to it so the threshold is basically where the compressor is going to start reacting so when is the compressor going to start compressing your sound when's it going to start ducking stuff down and bringing stuff up when is it going to start do compressing stuff pretty much compressing things together that's what the threshold is so you will set that depending on how much compression or how little you want your ratio is going to be how much compression is going to do per db so for every i think i think it goes for every four db is going to compress one or for every somebody oh no for every for say 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 the four to one basically what that means is for every four db of gain reduction you'll get one db of you know non gain or, or output so that's what that is so you can set it depending on how you want to two to one four to one it's a ratio i think when you go ten to one or higher that's when you get to limiting so you it's pretty much being a limiter at that point but yeah you want to be careful with it so you got to experiment because depending on how much the ratio is going to depend on the sound of the compressor. So that's what that means. So for every amount of compression or de uh, reduction, you get in one dB of output. So just that's how the ratio works. 
if I'm incorrect, somebody type in the comment below. I know somebody gonna be like, oh, you're, you're fat boy, you don't know nothing. You're still be. There's gonna be a hater out there who's gonna do that. So whatever. Now the attack is gonna be when the compressor actually reacts. So how fast is it gonna you know compress down on the signal when it goes past the threshold? So when it goes past the threshold, how fast is it gonna react to that um that signal and you start compressing? That's what your attack is. Your release is basically the opposite. Like after it compresses, how long is it gonna take to release to go back to the like the original like volume? That's what it is. So the attack and release kind of work together because they can give you some pretty interesting uh, effects either more i would say transparent or more aggressive so uh, play around with the attack and release because that really gives you the most control and gives you the most kind of characteristic dependent compressor and then your gain of course is going to be uh just pretty much when you compress something down so you compressing 6 db you got to boost it back up 6 db so it'd be at the same volume that it was when it was compressed so there you go that's a little brief kind of overview of it now let's actually do this in context so here we go so i'm gonna mute my vocals and i went out i'm gonna not mute my vocals. i'm gonna solo my vocals i wouldn't advise using compressor solo on a like vocal i would you use a compressor while I had the beat playing to kind of see what it's doing while the beat, but for demonstration purposes and whatnot, and me being just the stupid, fat, retarded person I am, we're gonna do it this way. All right, so here we go. So I'm about to play it and I'm gonna start messing around. So I'm first I'm gonna set my threshold for where I wanna start compressing. I'm a fat motherfucker, watch my belly shake. I fall out of bed and make the world quake. Damn, I'm hungry as hell. And as you can see, I'm getting about 6 dB. There is no rule to how much compression for your vocals. In my opinion, people say, make sure you get 6 to 8 dBs or 3 dBs. Do as much as you want. If it gives you the sound you want, then do it. That's all that matters. Don't listen to no rules. Rules are meant to be broken, especially in music and engineering and mixing. Just go ham. Like, when you get the sound you want, that's what it is. Your ears will tell you the truth every time. So I'm just going to compress it down till I get a, a good, you know, sound. I'm a fat motherfucker. Watch my belly shake. I fall out of bed and make the world quake. Damn. I'm hungry as hell. No food up in the fridge. You got some. Okay, I'm going to change the ratio. I might keep it four to one. Usually me, I usually do two to four to one depending on vocals, but you can definitely go uh, a lot more. It just gives you a different sound. I know for rock vocals, they, they slam the hell out of it. So it don't really matter. It's just the sound you're going for. So I might leave it four to one. I think four to one might be a good place to start. And yeah, so I'm just going to leave it there. But like I said, you can make it more gentle by going like the two to one. I'm a fat motherfucker. Watch my belly shake. I fall out of bed and make the... You just see, it just it just gives you a different sound. So you just gotta play around with the experiment and find the correct compression settings that work for you. Next is my attack and release. Now, how I do my attack and release, I will always start with my uh, attack and release super fast, and I will go attack and then release. So first, I'll bring my attack up until it sounds pretty good, and then I'll do the same with my release until it sounds a little natural. Like once you hear distortion and all that, you kind of don't want that, but you know you just gotta play around until you get the sound you want. There is no right or wrong answer. Like I said, the attack is gonna be how fast to compress, the release is gonna be how long it takes to go back to its original volume. I'm a fat motherfucker, watch my belly shake. I fall out of bed and make the world quake. Damn, I'm hungry as hell. No food up in the fridge, you got some stamps for sale? I look up in my bank account, that shit say zero. I guess I'm gonna be stuck a hometown hero. Well, I guess the haters were right, but I still got weed, so I'm high as a kite. Yeah, damn. I'm lost up in I'm a fat motherfucker, watch my belly shake. I fall out of bed and make the world quake. Damn, I'm hungry as hell. No food up in the fridge, you got some stamps for sale? That sounds good to me right there. I like that. It, it has a nice little sound to it. It's not too aggressive. It's not too transparent. It's there. As you notice, when I had my attack super fast, you heard a lot of background noise because it was bringing up all that uh, silence and making that louder as well. Like I said, compression is basically an automatic game uh, rider. So that's what it's doing. So it's bringing up all the quiet stuff at the same time because it's reacting super fast. So every little noise is bringing it. So the echoes off the wall and all that, it's bringing those up to the same volume we can hear. So like I said, keep that in mind. Now I'm going to bring up my game uh, bring up my gain now to match the level of what it previously was. And it will compare contrast, no compression versus compression. I'm a fat motherfucker. Watch my belly shake. I fall out of bed and make the world quake. Damn. I'm hungry as hell. No food up in the fridge. You got some stamps for sale? I look up in my bank account. That shit say zero. I guess I'm gonna be stuck a hometown hero. Well, I guess... 
And one thing a lot of people do wrong when it comes to compressors, they bring the makeup gain up until it's louder than the original stuff. You don't want to do that. You want to make it the same volume or close to the same volume as without the compressor. That's what you want to do because that's going to give you the best result, in my opinion. And that's how compressors really do too. You can put a sick compressor after the fact and do some weird stuff like that if you want it louder. Or just put a limiter after your compressor if you want your stuff louder. Pro tip. So let me go. I'm a bypass compressor versus compressor. With that, with and without, and you can kind of see what it sounds like with and without. So, I'm a fat motherfucker. Watch my belly shake. I follow the bed and make the world quake. Damn, I'm hungry as hell. No food up in the fridge. You got some stamps for sale? I look up in my bank account. That shit say zero. I guess I'm gonna be stuck a hometown hero. Well, I guess the haters were right, but I still got weed, so I'm high as a kite. Yeah, damn, I'm lost up in my own mind. I thought I was winning, but I'm way behind. I guess you can just see how it's more consistent and more in your face and more upfront the way it should be. Without the compressor, it seems like it's kind of going in and out because as you see the wave files up here. I am kind of going up and down with different volumes of my vo vocals, but the compressor just makes it all stay one level. So now let's play it with the beat so you can hear what it sounds like with and without the beat. You kind of just hear a little difference. So here we go, we'll play it with and without. I'm a fat motherfucker, watch my belly shake. I follow the bed and make the world quake. Damn, I'm hungry as hell. No food up in the fridge, you got some stamps for sale? I look up in my bank account, that shit say zero. I guess I'm gonna be stuck a hometown hero. Well, I guess the haters were right, but I still got weed, so I'm high as a kite. Yeah, damn. I'm lost up in my own mind. I thought I was winning, but I'm way behind. You just hear that signature compressed vocal sound that you get. And it's very easy to do. Like I said, this is just a way of controlling your vocals. Now, if I want to go even extreme with it, I will add a second compressor to it. And I would like crank up the settings and all that to make it sound more aggressive and in your face and give it kind of a, a effect to it. And that's how I would do it. I would use one compressor to always, always level out my vocals and now use a sick compressor to add my effect. And like I said, you can do this with any compressor. It doesn't matter if it's stock, third party, or whatever, it works exactly the same. You're basically just pretty much making this to control the volume and just keep everything in a consistent pace. As you can hear with the beat, it just sounded more consistent and they all, like all the words I said just stayed the same level and that's what you want. So you're listening on how to to turn stuff up turn stuff down you have to do automation yourself it just kind of stays at a consistent volume and like i said each compressor has its own sound as well like i said there's different modes depending on the compressor and there's other features in here but those are the five uh the five main controls you need to worry about that's pretty much in every compressor every standard compressor like i said there are vintage stuff and all that but whatever so remember set your threshold for when it needs to be compressed your ratio how much compression you want to happen your attack how fast it happens your release how fast it releases and then your makeup gain to bring it back to the same volume as it originally was and that's how you use compressor taught by a fat guy so with that being said you know yeah now you can compress anything you want to so with that being said i hope you guys enjoy like always your boy slim aka mr different not motivated by money but the like comment subscribe and views and super fat as well please leave some comments below if you got any questions about this if you want me to dive deeper in some more effects or maybe go more in depth about other features in a compressor maybe take a look at different types of compressors and maybe compare them as well i'll be happy to do that because i don't mind and it's always a great thing a great learning experience and you guys help me build this channel help me create content so with this said if you like the video thumb it up if you didn't thumb it down because you know you're haters and that's what haters do and with that being said i guess i'll just see y'all next video have a good one everybody